This is Marcus Kova with Studio MMA and MMA Net, and we're here with one of the most respected referees in the game in the UFC, Mario Yamagasaki. How are you feeling? I'm feeling really good. Just came back from Brazil, so it's a long trip. You're looking nice and suntan. Did you get a one a day two or? <laughs> well, it's summer in Brazil now, so it's pretty nice, you know. But I, I didn't have time to go to the beach yet. I think I'm gonna go when I go back from here. And uh, we're here in, in Nashville at the moment uh, for, for UFC on Fox. You're refereeing uh, over the weekend, oh, tomorrow night, Friday as well? Yes, I'm refereeing tomorrow. Um, for a lot of people that don't know, they, you, you look more Japanese, you speak, with a, you speak fluent Portuguese and, and you are Brazilian. Uh, tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah, you know, my father is, is uh, a Japanese descendant. Brazil has the biggest Japanese community outside Japan. And uh, my mom is Brazilian, so I'm half and half. Uh, but I lived in the U.S. for 22 years and just went back to Brazil in February. For the first time now? You've been back uh, in the past on vacation? Yes, I've been on vac vacation. I went like six, seven times a year. But I just moved back to Brazil to uh, grow the MMA there, to, to uh, off officiate a lot of you know, Brazilian uh, uh, tournaments. And uh, we're going to do the commission over there too. Is it nice to get a chance to, to go back to your home country and bring what you have helped spread in the U.S. back to Brazil? Because when you look looking at it as a sport, as, as, as an event, it's obviously surpassed Brazil and now giving back to the community. Is it nice for you to be able to, to get a chance to be part of it? Yeah, that was the idea, you know, because when I came to the U.S. It was to work and, and to make money and go back to Brazil. Now I have a chance to go back and to do what I love. And Brazil needs some help now organizing the the, the promotions and they have good promotions there but they need some some help because we started the MMA in Brazil but was you know different than now so we had to come here they lapidated they, they transformed to what it is today because used to be called uh, Vale Tudo then it came here it was called uh, um, um, NHB, NHB <laughs> and then uh, went to MMA so now we're going back with this great sport and Brazil is, is like exploding to get this back. So I think it's going to be good. And one of the, the best things with, with yourself is that you're not just a referee, not just a fan of the sport. You participate yourself. You compete a lot. You, you're a black belt in jiu-jitsu, both you and your brother Fernando as well. Um, do, are you still active? Do you still roll? Do you still compete? I don't compete. Um, I stopped competing probably 10 years ago. But I went back to train last year and I hurt my left knee. So now I'm waiting to get a gap uh, on the refereeing. So I want to do the surgery. Then I want to train again and maybe compete in the Worlds one more time or two more times if I go back. Yeah. Let's see how I feel. I want to compete again. But on the, you know, the cane category, those old men. So <laughs> <laughs> so just like, like yourself, your brother Fernando is also a, a great um, a Brazilian black belt who's also r refereed and, and refereed in the UFC. Um, between the two of you, Who's, who's the better grappler? Well, my, my brother's too active, you know. He's teaching uh, the gyms that we have 15 gyms in the U.S. We have in Sweden, we have in Dominican Republic, Atlantic City. And after I, I stopped teaching, he took over the gym. So he's too active training. So now he's a, a better grappler. But we always train together. You know, we grew up fighting. We came from judo. My father is a, a, a red and white belt in judo, eight, oh. eight done. And they went to the Olympic Games. My cousin competed in Barcelona in 92. So we always been competitive. In judo, we didn't have like Jiu Jitsu. Oh, you're not going to compete at the end. We had to fight. So, you know, we always fight. And um, you, your, your father, does he speak Japanese? And has he told you, do you speak Japanese? You know, I don't speak Japanese. That's the only um, thing that I regret because my father tried to push when I was young. And I was a little wild. I didn't want to do it. So I, you know, I just speak Spanish, English, and Portuguese, and you do very well. Um, now, when it comes to to the refereeing, you and your brother have been in the game for a very, very long time. When when people say refereeing in mixed martial arts in the UFC, Big John McCarthy, Herb Dean, and the Yamasaki brothers, and especially you, obviously, you've had uh, a lot more airtime on TV, so to speak, with uh, with the, with the UFC. Um, how did you get started? Well, you know, I was uh, responsible to take the UFC. To Brazil the first time in 98 I helped them over there and that's when I met everybody so when I on the way back I said to John I said John why do you only referee in the UFC he said well, we're looking for somebody and I just raised my hands and he said let's try yourself I, I you know I told him I said I can ref 
and they try the next time. I, my first UFC, UFC 20. Right. And because of the background that I had, you know, my father was the only international referee in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And every time he did a course for judo, he, would, he used to take me and my brother to fake the, the, the fights. So, you know, commit fouls and, uh, fouls and all that. So the, the, the guys would train to be a referee. So for me, the mechanics and everything else was pretty easy. And because we did that in Brazil, you know, the, the Vale Tudo back then, we knew where to, you know, when to stop and, and arm locks. Jiu-Jitsu helped a lot. So the UFC was actually your, your starting ground when it came to mixed martial arts? As a referee, yes. Were you nervous the first time you stepped in there? Yes, every time we're nervous because we don't want to make mistakes. Yeah, of course. But um, now, you know, because I've been refereeing for over uh, 15, 16 years, um, the only thing that we, we get is not because of the public, not the, you know, I just don't want to hurt the, 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 the fighters, I don't want to make right. a mistake and then, you know, damage the fighter's career. So um, that's the only thing that I, we don't want to do, any, any referee don't want to do that. And, uh, and rightfully so, and, and you know, it's, it's a big responsibility that you carry inside of the cage. Uh, and uh, I've heard interviews with uh, boxing referees who have been in there when, luckily, there haven't been any deaths in mixed martial arts, but being the referee as a boxer have died inside of the ring. Uh, and uh, it stays with the conscience for the rest of their life. Obviously, the fighters go in there on their own. They're well prepared. They do the best. And, and, and it's, no one wishes that upon anyone. But it is a big responsibility that you carry on your shoulders, uh, and uh, for obvious reasons, we we can't talk about what's what's been in the in the recent history over the last few weeks. But um, you know, it's it's not just in mixed martial arts. We see it in a lot of sports, such as another big sport in Brazil, obviously football, soccer, where where you have referees and and what a lot of people don't realize is you only have a split second to see things. How fast do things? happening there and how how on your toes do you have to be how how ready do you have to be at all times well you know because i've been in the, in the game so long and i see a lot of referees starting the game when they ref with me you know especially when they come from smaller events to the ufc i train them i help them and they always say you know that the speed on ufc is much faster than smaller events of course, yeah, they first well. yes and, and it's totally different and the thing that we they have a split seconds is when you know the guy get knocked down, get knocked out. What's the difference between when to stop when they get going down? Is it knockdown? Is a knockout? What is it? Is he coming back? Sometimes the guy is knocked out, you know, on the way down. But then when he hits the ground, he wakes up and then he start fighting again because their their mentality is trained like that. It's like you know I don't know if, if you guys ever been uh, knocked out or knocked oh, yeah. down. Unfortunately, yes. Yes. <laughs> So, you know, we have a good exercise that we put the b baseball bat here and you do some circles and you try to hit a, a center pole. You can't get because of your balance is off. When a boxer, you know, get knocked, knocked down and they start counting, start trying to get up. And that's the feeling that, you know, you train because the boxer wants to come up, but the body wants to shut down. So that's the difference, you know, when, but a grappler, when he's that, like that, he can stay on the ground, grab your opponent and then rest a little bit to come back. So that's sometimes you see they're trying to, to rest to wrestle with us or, or you know, so that's the difference. Arm locks and chokes those are you know easier than um, uh, uh, knockout, but everything happens so fast and you have to decide right there because you can't wait. You can't just go and see on, on the screen. So let me see what happens and I can decide. So sometimes we make a mistake because of that speed. And that's that's the the issue that a lot of people have brought up when it comes to obviously being able to uh, to go back and look at a, an instant replay and and that's something that's been discussed for a while. Um, but uh, it's it's a little bit easier for a boxing referee uh, in in a lot of situations because a knockdown is the glove touches the ground, anything but the sole of your shoe touches the ground, that's a knockdown. Like you were saying in MMA, is he out, is he not out? Is it just a reflex of his body or is he actually fighting back? And we see decisions sometimes where, you know, referees are saying, yeah, you, 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 the person was hurt and the guy is, is saying, no, I was not. Because of, a lot of times it's pride. They wanna, the fighter inside of them say they want to continue fighting most yes. of the time, right? What's in your career the most bizarre moment in your whole fighting uh, refereeing career that you have witnessed yourself well bizarre was just breaking bones you know like i see a guy kicking another guy's leg and the and the shin just break when he comes back you know he steps and he has no 
no base and he goes down and the referee didn't see that he broke and the guy jumped on him and start punching him over again. Those kind of things, you know, is kind of uh, um, bizarre, but, you know, I've seen some knockouts from the beginning, you know, like Tank Abbott when he knocked the guy out and his head was all twisted on the, on the cage. So those things are, are for me, it's fun to watch, but then when you see it again, you know, people that doesn't know is just uh, kind of bizarre. But funniest moment, funniest moment um, was um, Dennis Holman walking in the UFC with those speedos. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think when you saw that? What did you think? Oh man, he's crazy. I think he's just uh, uh, they're gonna. They, I think they're gonna ban that from people walking. Oh yes, they the, did already. Yes. Yeah. It's kind of, uh, I don't know, it was funny, you know. Do you know why he wore them? No. He lost the bet and he was actually a man. He lost the bet and he said if I lose the bet, he was going to wear those. He lost the bet and as a man, he wore them. That's it then. <laughs> no <Yeah>. more. <laughs> so, um, back to the to the refereeing um, and, and being in there and like you said, the biggest... Oh, so, so I'm gonna ask you it because it looks better if I ask you directly when it comes to the event, and you just tell me I can't speak about it, because otherwise they're gonna say you're sitting with Mario and I was okay, and you're not asking what happened, and and that way people you can tell the people too that you're not allowed to speak about it. Um, and back to the refereeing, the responsibility of 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 being a ref in there, and like you said, when it comes to the safety of the fighter. Uh, last week in Brazil, you know, the biggest event in Brazil, there was a controversy when it came to to uh, to the stoppage of the fight, the disqualification. Um, have you had a chance to review it, and what's your opinion of it? Seeing it again? Yes, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, the UFC and the commissioners they told me not to say anything about that until we decide what's going to come out out of it. Um, as soon as they let me talk, you know, I would like to talk because I can I can explain what I see, what I saw, and. and uh, you know, when I was there, Joe Hogan was kind of putting me on the on the spot. Of course. So when they they release me, I'm gonna talk and I'm gonna say just what I thought about in that moment, what happened, and it's a fair call. It's not a you know. So when I can, I'll talk to you guys. And and obviously on 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 that topic, the fundamental part is it comes down to safety and responsibility of of of. Uh, Making sure fighters are safe, correct? Correct. At all times, that's our, our main goal: is to protect the fighters. That you know, I, we don't want anybody to get hurt in there. And as you said before, a fighter at the moment he's you know, have a hit. He, he wants to go there, and he doesn't think. So we are there to think for them. If we think that he, they can continue, we will stop. Um, on that topic as well, with the fellow countryman and yourself, uh, Nogueira Bignog, uh, who just had a horrible break of the arm, which shows how tough he is as a competitor, how tough he is as a man, taking that punishment and the pain. But in the end of the day, the arm is broken and his career has been halted for at least six to probably maybe a year. Um, what would be your message be to young fighters that are out there, for even professional fighters that are in there today, saying, I will never tap? What's your opinion? Well, you know, because I'm an instructor, I have gyms, I always tell my, my, my students, when you are there training, don't go over, don't, don't stress your, your elbows or your knees or your head, because the more injury you have, the less time you're going to have to fight. Right. So, you know, you can see the life of a fighter goes up, and down fast when he start getting hurt. Yeah. So the fighters that doesn't hurt don't get hurt too many times. He stayed longer right. in the game. So uh, just to explain what happened to Nogueira, you know Nogueira was holding the the Kimura, and what happened was broke in between his shoulder and his elbow. Wasn't because most of the time people don't tap and you know the the, the um, ligaments goes <laughs> and it comes out. So those things, the ligaments is worse than bones. Bones heals fast, goes back fast. He didn't even have to put anything on the bones, just healing by himself. So he was holding, he was not there, he wasn't gonna tap. If if he went over the shoulder, he probably would have tapped. But because he was trying to hold and he just a lot of the pressure that they he put was too too much for a bone. 
you know, to break a bone, it takes 16 pounds to break a bone. So can you imagine the power that he went there? So, but my, my thing is do tap, don't hurt yourself because that's going to short your, your fighting career. Thank you, Mario. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing the, the reviews, what happens. Last question for you. Your favorite knockout of in the, in the history that you've been with the UFC? Man, I, I have to say um, the Brazilian guy that just knocked out the guy last uh, Saturday. Uh, Barbosa? Barbosa, yeah. Uh, Barbosa? Yeah, Edson Barbosa I think was one of the best knockouts I've ever seen. It was incredible. And I can't, we can't forget, you know, Anderson Silva and um, Lyoto Machida also with those front kick was unbelievable too. Against Vitor and, and Randy Couture, absolutely. Yes. So, did you ref any of those fights? Um, no, oh, I ref the, the um, Vitor and um, Anderson Silva. Did you realize that Vitor was out as soon as he hit, hit the ground? Well, actually he was out, but wasn't really out. He was, you know, knocked down, but he, he couldn't, he wasn't there. But I had to make sure because it was a title bout. Yeah. And I told them at the, at the locker room, I said, look, I'm only going to stop the fight after you stop defending yourself. So when he went down, he put his arms up and you can see he was trying to defend himself, but he couldn't see. So then Anderson Silva came on the side and punched him again. And then that's when I stopped the fight. And for people that don't know, it's considered defend yourself intelligently. Right. Yes. Yes. He has to be thinking. He has to be. He has to know where he is. So as after that punch, that's when I walked in and, and stopped the fight. You heard it directly here from Mario Masaki, one of the most respected and well, uh, most experienced fight, uh, uh, referees that we have in the game. Thank you very much. All right, man. Obrigado. Obrigado. <laughs>